Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Lorac Mega Pro 4. It seems like around the holidays every year, or before the holidays, in anticipation of the holidays, they put out a big old palette like this, a 32 color palette, half matte, half shimmer. This one's going to run you $59 at Ulta, and every year I look really critically at these palettes they put out, and I think, is it worth that price? I think back to the first one, I remember contained a lot of like uh, burgundy, plummy kind of colors, also a lot of neutrals as well. While I love the color, color scheme, I remembered thinking, I'm not sure that this constitutes a palette this large because it stayed so kind of in one zone. Then the second one came out and I thought it was fantastic. It inspired a lot of creativity, a lot of different kinds of shades were in that palette. It was just a great mix, a lot of unique shades as well that I hadn't really seen before, so I loved that one. Then the three came out, just a big neutral palette, honestly looked kind of common in the scope of so many neutral palettes that have been and continue to be coming out. Now keep in mind, I love the quality of these palettes that I'm mentioning, but it's more of a shade selection thing, and you know, you're thinking about paying nearly 60 bucks for one palette. You want it to be like everything. You want it to exceed your expectations. And now the four comes out, and I am brought right back to that place where I was at with the two, where I am loving it so much. It's a perfect mix of shades that um, take me a little bit to the edge of my comfort zone, but also a bunch of shades that I feel super comfortable wearing as well. And and there was a time in my makeup using days, I'm thinking back to really the early days of my channel, where it was like, if I just had a big palette with a ton of shades in it, like, give me 88 colors and I'm going to be happy, you know? Just a lot of quantity in a palette seemed to excite me. And now I'm more in a place where I like a small palette and just give me, you know, important colors. Give me colors that all make their own unique impact, not a bunch of BS repeated shades. I mean, let's face it, there are a lot of palettes filled with BS colors. You know, they're so close to this other shade, by the time you get them blended out on the eyes, they would look exactly the same. So why are you here? I don't want a palette full of why are you here colors. This everything has its place. If I were to imagine how the meeting went down over this palette among Lorac's staff, I would say they probably sat down and said, let's try to throw in some shades nobody's seen before that nobody's doing in palettes. And then if we have some really good basics in there, let's just make them next level good. Let's make them as good as they can possibly be. Okay, team, break. And then this is what they came up with. And it's amazing. And I think it's totally worth the money and then some. Like, I'm not exaggerating here. I'm not getting like swept up by hype or whatever. I don't even know if this palette's been hyped up. I I haven't honestly heard a lot of talk about it yet. I've got a lot of other holiday stuff sitting around here that I've kind of looked at and swatched through, and let me tell you, all that stuff has a really tough act to follow because this is just really impressive. It's a palette of really cool eyeshadows doing lots of unique and interesting things. This is a palette for all seasons. Like, I absolutely see this working at any time of the year for any type of look, you know, light, kind of barely there, really natural looks, deep, sultry, ultra smoky types of looks, warm, cool. Um, it's a great mix of pure shades, shades that just look at you and say, I am blue, you know, I am rust, I am green. But then some really interesting kind of murky shades where, you know, they're, you look at it and they call it misty mauve. And I'm thinking, I don't see the mauve in it, but then I use it or swatch it. I'm like, yeah, I do see the mauve in there. You know, like the shades that kind of mess with you a little bit. I love that. Something unexpected. Um, something that, like I said, kind of pushes me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Gives me ideas for unique shade combinations. And I like to think that I'm the kind of person that could just sit with a random, you know, bunch of makeup on my lap and just pull from here, pull from there. Just really get this super creative, unusual look. But honestly, I am very steered by the palette that I'm using. And so when a palette does give me some different things to work with, then it gives me the inspiration. It gives me the thought to combine that shade and that shade to set my look up in a little different way. So this is going there for me. It's giving me those same feelings of excitement that the two did, but just in a different way, a different selection of shades happening here. And I'm so excited about it. Before I dig into the shades and the swatches, just the construction of the palette itself, it feels exactly like even one of the smaller Lorac palettes. You know, it's thin, it's not over packaged. It's really gonna be, I think, easy to travel with and take with you. There is a huge mirror in here, so you could like prop this up on a dresser, see your entire face in it as you do your makeup. And then I love how it completely folds back behind. So if you're like me and you're sitting at a makeup desk, you just wanna hold this in your lap, it's so, so easy. You know, you're not dealing with a bunch of bulk, a bunch of weirdness on the packaging, it's just about the makeup. So I'm gonna go through all these shades, we'll talk swatches, and then um, I will show you the eye look that I've got on today, which is definitely giving me like 
life Cinderella in the blue dress vibes on my lower lash line. I'm loving this. Top row of mattes up here. We're looking at a really bright white matte with cotton. Flamingo, super fun shade to work into your crease, actually. I love that pink. Cool taupe, butterscotch, you know, lighter shades that could work as either highlights, depending on your skin tone, or even a crease color there with butterscotch. Cedar, a nice, rich, basic brown. Mocha, there's a shade that tons of people are going to love to set up a look with in their crease. Denim, so accurately named. Like, this reminds me of just an old school, perfect looking denim pair of jeans that I would have had as like an eight year old. I've used that shade in my crease and it's kind of fun. And then shadow is your dark matte charcoal. Quality wise, these are what you're going to expect from Lorac. The only shade that's really surprised me thus far is Flamingo. It's pigmented, but it didn't kick up a bunch of fallout. The rest of these shades, like Mocha, kicks up a decent amount. When you put your brush in, you're gonna see some powder going around. I've talked fallout before. Some people that really irritates them. For me, it's a matter of just building up your look little by little, tap off the excess. I'm no stranger to Lorac's palettes. So I've seen shadows show up this way in their, you know, original palettes, these larger palettes that they do. It's no surprise to me. They're really good quality though. They're very pigmented. They go on very evenly. So that top row was your warm up. Now moving into the next row, Pink Peony has a really amazing brightness. It's almost as bright if not brighter than cotton, just for the fact that it's got that little bit of pink in it, which is interesting. Oat would make a nice basic crease color. It's different from butterscotch and mocha, which I've already mentioned. Light sage. Get out of town. I do not have a light green color like this that is just barely there green, like mix of green and cream. Sugar cookie, another kind of weird shade that looks just like basic taupe, but it's got a little smidge of some lavender in there. Mahogany and blackberry. These are shades where you're going to glance at the palette and be like, oh, a couple of dark browns. No, 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 sir. Mahogany is a dark, dark mauve is how I describe that. And blackberry is a really rich, plummy brown. Spice, everybody wants spice. So spice is in there. Yay. I love it. Dark chocolate, just that really nice, dark, cool brown everybody needs. Now the shimmery rose over the top over the top. Like, let's just jump in. Foam is coming at you from another planet here. This is like the single best shimmery highlight type shade ever. It is so opaque. It's so full on. You see what I mean when I said colors that maybe we've seen before that they've put in this palette? They're just taking them next level. Honey, gorgeous gold, pearl slate, really pretty taupe shade. There's a hint of gold in that as well. I love the brilliance of moss. You'll see that turning up in today's look. Steel wool is equally out of control. Just like foam. I mean, it's like, what is going on here? This is so metallic. This is so gorgeous. Copper Pearl is like that dirtier, richer, deeper version of honey. Peacock is screaming. It is so, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. The purity of that blue and the shine that it has is just so, so stunning. And then Lagoon also worked that into today's look. I mean, that a swatch cannot do this shade justice. Dark teal with shimmer. It's just killing it. Do you see what I'm I'm saying about the uniqueness so far though, like the honey shade, the copper pearl, spice, one of these colors, you throw those together and you have like the classic fall makeup look that everybody's doing, but then you've got moss, peacock, steel wool, crazy good shades. Now let's go down to the last row. I'm like crying over these colors, unicorn, lotus, and fairy tale. Just behold. These are so good. Unicorn, such a fun shade. It's like lilac with a little bluish twist. Lotus and fairy tale. Okay, you swatch these out, you're going to notice a little bit of a drier consistency, a little more flake to these. But I tell you, before I even touch these shades with my fingers, I started just using them in looks on the eyes, and they apply great. They build up wonderfully. Fairy tale is what's giving me like the Cinderella lower lash line today, and I just love that shade. Misty Mauve, you're going to glance at this and say, well, that just looks like duh kind of brown, but it is so good. When this shade shears out, it's doing something interesting. There is most definitely a mauve brown thing going on there. Silver Fox, Plum, these are shades that you can work into like everyday eye looks, but they're just different. Like Plum has that slightest bit of pearly sheen. Like it's barely belonging in these shimmery rows. And I love how not every shimmer is exactly the same here. Some are super metallic. Some just have this little bit of pearl. Some like fairy tale are just like knocking the door down. Vamp is going to be your dark smoky plum and then raven 
gorgeous, rich, sparkly kind of charcoal blast. So words of advice when using this palette, I would say use an eye primer. I do with absolutely everything. I mean, it's just kind of an essential step for me. And especially when you're dealing with colors like this, they're very pigmented and a little bit goes a long way. Tap off the excess and then, you know what, if you see some excess tapped back into that shadow, just pick that up and use that on the other eye. You know, you can get use out of it all. I would say just build up little by little and you will have control over these eyeshadows. But there are so many shades in here, like I said, that can do the basic, easy, everyday, just kind of not really wanting to think about it too much, just give me an eye look kind of days. And then when you want to experiment, you have all of the means to do that as well. And I love the thought of combining warm and cool. I've done that with some looks. I mean, one that I love particularly, I worked in a little spice and I think it was mocha in my crease. And then I had a combination of unicorn and lotus on my lid and it was just glowing. I mean, it was so beautiful. But I want to give you a little talk through of the look that I did today. So as I mentioned, primed the lids with Milani eyeshadow primer. And then the first thing I put in there was flamingo. Um, I kind of like using this as a crease color sometimes, this soft pinky shade. And then I used a little bit of mocha in my crease as well, kind of the outer part. So you can get a feel for that. I think this is a color a lot of people are going to want to reach for often. Just really add some richness to the crease without even going too dark just yet. I also used cool taupe as my highlight right up under my brow. And then I'm going to be working from the inner part of my lid outward. So I started with foam and this shade just pops. Just a tiny bit of this shade gives you this opaque brightness. And then I patted moss all over most of the lid, leaving a little bit of a gap on the outer part of my lid. And that just packs on so easily, so beautifully. And then today was my first time using Lagoon. And that shade is teal richness. It's so beautiful to see it kind of overlapping with moss a little bit. Work that up into the crease ever so slightly. And periodically throughout the look, you know, I'm taking a blending brush and I'm just kind of making sure the edges are all sort of uh, smoothed out. And after you've done some blending, you may want to, you know, go back and add a little more intensity. I like to take a little more moss just to make sure that that shade didn't get blended away at all. And then on the lower lash line, what I did, I took this teal liner from the L'Oreal Silkissimi line and I used that in my lower inner rim, smudged it a little bit on the lower lash line, and then I used Lagoon smudged over that as well. So we've got now rich dark teal coming on top of it. And then I took Fairy Tail, which is this gorgeous, like light, kind of bluish, silvery shade. And I took that all the way inward on my lower lash line. And by the time you've got then some liquid liner on the upper lashes, maybe pop on some false lashes, you've got your lower mascara on. I love the way that shimmery lower lash line peeks through there. It's just gorgeous gorgeous. So just an example of a fun look, a pretty look, you know, a really glamorous look, I think, that was kind of creative, a unique fusion of shades all together that I wouldn't have really thought to put together without this palette. I'm not sure what else is left to say, um, but thank you for your patience, for letting me try this out, doing multiple looks with this, and really getting a feel for it. I never like to just, you know, use a palette once and then hop on and here's my review. Especially a big palette like this, it takes some experimentation, even though I knew after my first look, look that I was falling in love with this. I kept using it, kept going for some different color combos, and learning about the unexpected nature of some of these shades. It's really something I think you need to get home, get in your lap, and just start using on your eyes to fully appreciate what's going on here. But um, I enjoy it so, so much. I would highly recommend it. I think it's going to be one of the top picks for sure of the holiday season makeup-wise for me. So yeah, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and I will see you again soon. Bye, guys! Thank you